Hey guys, have you ever thought about investing into an Airbnb property but not sure exactly what direction to go? Well, make sure you tune into this video. Keep watching. I'm going to give you some pro tips on how to make sure you become an investor in this market. Yeah. Ow! Yeah. Y'all think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore, I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my- What's going on, everybody? As you know, my name is Mike Self, and I am the Prince of Real Estate here in the Central Florida market. Now today we're going to take a different route because I know you're used to seeing me view the new construction homes and other resale homes, but today we're going to actually look into Airbnb properties and how to properly invest into them. Now the home that we're viewing today is actually one of my favorites because it's a home I closed on with one of my out-of-state investors and this is his Airbnb property. So I'm going to show you exactly what it is, how it looks, and you know, we'll talk a little numbers or whatever so we can see exactly how much we're making. This particular home here is going to be a four bedroom, two bath with a pool. So it's a nice home. So come with me. Let's check it out. Let's get from out of the sun and let's talk more about this property. All right, guys. So welcome inside. So one of the first things that you're going to see when walking into this home, which is one of my favorite parts, is the character of this home. You do not see homes made like this at all, really. Really, unless you have a private builder and this is the style that you want. But as you can see within this Airbnb, it's very open, high ceilings, give you a lot of room to kind of play with when it comes to design. So one of the, one, one of the main things that you wanna have in your Airbnb is something that kind of stands out. So this feature of the home alone makes it stand out. Now coming over here to your left, you're gonna have two rooms up front. Now, usually with the home tours, I'll point out, oh, this room, that room. What I want you guys to see is the advantage that you can take from each room when you're actually having an Airbnb because you want to maximize on the space that you have in the home. So this first home, I mean, this first room here, I know I, I should have done it probably before and after, but he actually changed the floors up in, uh, in the rooms as well. So that kind of added a little bit more flavor to the room, a little, it made it more attractive. Um, in this particular room here, he decided to add a queen size bed. Now, when you're looking at the beds and the type of beds that you actually put into your room, that lets you know the number of people that you can have in the room. So because you, even though you see one bed, this bed will allow you to have at least two people. So for this particular home, you can have up to, being that it's a four bedroom, you can have up to eight people in the room. So again, so this is gonna be a nice size room. You wanna make sure each room has a TV in it. It's comfortable enough, it got its fan. So that way, you know, everybody can't really control the AC situation. So I love what he did with this room. He changed it up. It got its natural lighting coming in. Then you're gonna have your shared bathroom right here. Now, when you are investing in an Airbnb, you wanna make sure everything is properly clean. So this bathroom is clean to standard. Um, you have your project management company that comes in too, because again, he is an out of state investor. So you have just like your small little touches like this. I mean, I know it's simple, it's toilet tissue, but every single detail matters. So you wanna make sure that the people are coming in, whoever are, whoever your clients are, when they're coming in that they feel that they're at home they're still kind of getting that hotel feel and that you're accommodating them properly so you want to make sure that you have certain small things like that done and you have the proper supplies speaking of supplies right here is going to be your pantry for your um for your towels so you want to make sure you have enough towels, wash rags, and everything that's going to accommodate everybody in the home, especially when you have a pool home. So not only do you want to make sure you have your towels for bathing, but you have your towels for your pool. Coming in here is going to be the second room. Again, he redid the flooring, which again is a nice touch. I love it because it goes well with the tile that he has already throughout the entire home. 
So this room also accommodates two more people. So this room, the way he got it set up, sheets and everything, this could either be a kid's room or it can be another adult room if you don't mind sharing with someone. So it's a pretty good space. Again, you make sure you have a big enough TV to entertain, make sure everybody feels welcome, feels good. So that way, if you don't feel like leaving a room, you can have that as well. All right. So now that we're going into the other portion of the home, again, I love, love, love this space. Going into the more open part of the home, you're going to have your kitchen area, you're going to have your dining room area, and you're going to have your living room. Coming off into the kitchen area. Now, what you want to make sure that you have in your kitchen is that it is an entertaining space. Because again, you got to think about it. When people are getting Airbnb properties, they're getting something to entertain their family or either they're visiting a city or a state to where they have other family members to come over and most of the time you're cooking so you want to make sure that you have the proper appliances that work in your home so of course you're going to have your microwave you're going to have your five eye stove here which is a nice stove and then of course you know you got your simple appliances such as your coffee maker and your toast i mean excuse me yeah your toaster so again, simple things like this that really, really matter because again, you want people to feel like they're at home in your home. When they feel like they're at home, they want to take care of your home, okay? So you have your dishwasher and I love, I love the color of the cabinets. And my favorite part of this kitchen is gonna be this breakfast nook area. I love that he has this here because not only do you have the dining room area, but you have another sitting area. So this part is good for me because if I was on vacation and I had my family, my family, are, they are big card players. So spades, we have to play it. Spades, uno, whatever type of cards you can bring, this is the table that we're using and we're slapping. So this again allows more entertainment for those who want to kind of chill out, eat, be in the TV room, they can do that. But for those that want to be loud, playing cards, or if you're a bit cooked because you don't see a huge island in here, you can actually utilize the space to kind of, you know, provide more storage for when you're cooking. So again, you want to make sure everything is very accommodating. And again, more window space, more um, natural lighting. It's always a huge plus. This room here to my left is going to be for the washer and dryer. Now, this is a huge plus because a lot of places don't allow, depending on what type of home you're in, does not have the washer and dryer set up for it. So this is very, very, very convenient to your clients because, you know, you sometimes you have kids, even with adults, you make mistakes in your clothes. So you want to make sure you get a quick wash in if you did not purchase enough clothes with you. Or um, sometimes, you know, if you are very structured, you may want to wash your clothes before you even get home. So that way you don't have to do it. So once you get home, you unpack, put it up, fold it, put it in the closet, whatever it may be. But this is a huge convenience for many. So make sure you have an appliance like that if you have a single family home. Or if you have a townhouse that can accommodate that as well. Coming over here, you're gonna have your dining room area, which again, this dining room area can actually, as you can see, it fits up to eight, but it actually can do like 10 to 12. So if you can get you a nice table that has like a large leaf, this area will accommodate that space. So it's good for gatherings. Look at these pillars. Again, this home, character. Nothing but character. Which then leads into the living room area. So as you can see, this is a large space. You have this huge sectional, which, oh my gosh, it is so comfortable. Which brings me to another point that you want to make sure you have in your home. Comfortable furniture. You do not want anybody leaving you a bad review for the type of furniture that you have in your home. So this sofa is perfect. So fun fact also about this house, because again, this is one of my buyers. So when purchasing this home, he purchased this home during the COVID period, which was a good time to buy. And also when he purchased this home for the price that he got for this home, the furniture came with it. So which was a huge plus for him because it gave him less work, especially because he was from out of town. So he didn't have to hire a lot of people. He didn't have to go to a lot of furniture stores because everything came the way that it was. He just added his small little personal touches, hung up a few TVs. As you can see, we had a few people come in and properly put the TVs up um, for entertaining purposes. 
and voila, you got your Airbnb. So he didn't really have to touch much with it. Now coming off into the other two bedrooms here. Now, I love what he did with this room. This room technically is considered a flex room because as you can see, you have your double doors here that open up, but this room does not have a closet. So we usually call this a flex room, which can be like a game room. So you can do so much for this. So depending on what type of clientele you can attract, you can make this room a game room. You can make this room an office. You can make this room a workout room. You can make it whatever you want because you have that space, especially with the high ceiling. So if you want to come in, you can see a little bit more of the features of the actual room here and you can see how big it is. But because of the clientele that he wants to attract and the area that we are currently in, because with being in the Davenport area, it is not too far from Disney, Universal Studios, SeaWorld, um, Aquatica, just International Drive, and you're probably about like 40 minutes away from the airport. So you have so many different attractions that aren't too far from this property. So he decided to go ahead and tailor it to the family clientele. So this allows more room and space for kids or young adults that don't mind sharing the bedding area. Okay, now coming off to your left, you fit two more people into the primary suite. So the primary suite is a beautiful suite, is very spacious. This is going to be a king size bed. So I'm gonna stand over here so you can see exactly how much space is in this room. So again, you wanna make it very comfortable and accommodating. So you're gonna make sure you get a really, really, really nice comforter here. And you wanna make sure too, depending on the season that you're in, that you're changing out the comforter. For hotter seasons, you wanna make sure you get something that still keeps you warm, but not as thick. And then when the winter comes, you wanna make sure you change it out to something thicker. So again, they don't have any complaints on the type of bedding that you actually have. This particular room is really nice because it sits right off from the pool, which we'll show you in a bit. So coming over here is going to be your bathroom area for your primary suite. And this home comes with the stand up shower and it also comes with a garden tub. And what I love about this tub, and again, it's all about the features. This tub has a jet. So if you want to kind of get away from everybody, you don't feel like going outside in the pool or the jacuzzi, you can do everything right here in the bathroom. So you're gonna have your double vanity sinks right here. You're gonna have your private area where your commode is gonna be located at. So that way, if someone is in the restroom, you can still do your thing without actually being bothered. And then you're gonna have your walk-in closet. And it good, it looked like he did the floors as well for the walk-in closet. So good job good job sir so i love these floors again because it, it goes well throughout the house but as you can see the way everything is set up in here you have your walk-in closet this is also slightly your storage closet so anytime that you need to have extra pillows extra comforters um sheets whatever it may be you have this area here where you can actually stack everything up but this gives your home away from home feel because a lot of times when people travel they like to make sure they feel at home for me, I personally leave things in a suitcase. A lot of people like to hang up their clothes. So good job, sir, with that. Now, let's go outside and let's go check out the pool area. All right, guys, so now we are on the outside area. So leading out from the living room area and also from the bedroom leads out to the pool area. The living room area goes directly into the patio area. I love when you have a couple of narrow air because again, it keeps you, I mean, we're in Florida for when it's hot and then you also have mosquitoes during certain seasons. So you wanna make sure you're protected from bugs. So the night areas are always a good plus because it allows you to enjoy outside, enjoy the weather, a lot of kids and family to play at the pool without actually having to be next to the pool. And this particular home has a fan outside. So that way, if it does get too hot, you have this air that's circulating out so that way you're not feeling the full effect of the heat so let's actually feel the heat ourselves and <laughs> come out here to the pool so this is what i mean by making sure you have certain appliances that accommodate your guests i mean who has a pool without making sure you have a grill okay 
So my bar made sure that he had an outside grill to accommodate everybody so they can do barbecues, they can have fun. I can tell you now, you're looking like, well, what about the pool? Why isn't the pool covered? That is coming soon. We could probably do a video or an update later on, but this particular area is going to be covered. It just, we wanted to get things established. So that's another key point. Sometimes when you have an ideal, just kind of go with it. You don't always have to wait till everything is fully executed because you tend to waste money by waiting. So the smart thing that my buyer did was went on and started Airbnb in the property. Everybody loved the property, how it looks. If this is your style, cool. We're going to rent it out, do what we got to do. And then later on, we're going to add on more value by adding that cover piece. So that again is co coming later. So that adds a more value, which means that you can increase the um, nightly price for your home. But here is going to be the pool area, as you can see. It's going to be a pool plus the jacuzzi. It's actually pretty, it's not too bad today. It's actually pretty nice out. So as you can see too, he added a few launch, a few chairs. Um, you have your umbrella, umbrella that is kind of laying out right now, but you can hook it up to whatever area that you want to have extra shade at. Um, but that's where the extra couple of now will come in at once he added in another another feature that you want to add on to your home to add in more costs is a heater to your pool so a lot of airbnbs if you have been to an airbnb and has a pool you notice that there's an additional charge for a heater now here in florida sometimes especially during the summertime you don't really need it because it's already hot the water's already warm so you're good to go but during like the coolest season because you know in Florida, we tend to still swim around December because it is a little warm. But depending on location and temp, people want heaters because the water then gets cool. So you can charge an additional nightly rate for the feature of the pool. So I believe on average, most people add in like a $50 a night charge to add on a heater if you want a heater connected for you and your family. What I love about being outside this home is how private it is. If you notice, the entire gate is around the home. And one thing that was a huge perk for us when we helped him purchase this home was the fact that he has no neighbors in the back. So he has neighbors on the side, but all of this is nothing but land. So you'll probably see it in the video later, but it's nothing but land. So he has nothing behind him, which allows more room to kind of be loud entertaining which is huge for me and guests this area here is another area that i actually love because it's basically it's like a flex space for outside so whether you want to add your own touch to it to do like a maybe a putt putt golf situation or let's just say you want us to add another jacuzzi or another part of the pool you can actually build into the home you can add a basketball court. You can do so much with this area. I personally would probably have put my grill over here to kind of get a little shade and made this the grilling area to get more seating space out that way. You have your fountain, you have your garden set up. I mean, you just have so many beautiful features added onto this home, which again, is what you want to make sure you have with the Airbnb because again, it is your home away from home, okay? So let's go back, let's go back inside. Let's speak on a few more tips as far as what to actually do when it comes to Airbnb, and then we'll end this video. Come on. All right, guys, so now let's discuss what it takes to get a Airbnb investment property now that we've seen the property itself. So number one thing you wanna make sure you do is make sure you get in contact with a professional such as myself. Or just call me. Instead of get somebody else, just call me. I got you, if you're in Florida. <laughs> but no, you wanna make sure you get Someone such as myself that's a realtor that actually knows the area, that's willing to do the research and to let you know exactly the potential amount of money that you can make off of a property such as this. Our job is to make sure we know what the attractions are such as Disney, what the eateries are. This location in particular here is near Champions Gate. So there's just a lot of traffic that's moving. And again, you wanna make sure you're in a high traffic location. One mistake you do not want to make and listen to me on this, please. Just because you see a property that is, let's say 200,000, you see a low price point, you be like, oh my gosh, this is like a decent property. I could probably do a little work to it. Let me Airbnb. Incorrect. 
Location, location, location is key. That's what a lot, that's a mistake that a lot of people make and that's actually how they lose out on their money and a possible chance of going into foreclosure if you cannot take care of the mortgage and any of the expenses that are coming because you're not receiving the proper revenue. So again, make sure you get the proper location and then also look into the expenses that it takes for running your Airbnb. So you want to realize, well, you want to look into what is your mortgage going to be? So it's always good to purchase a property when the, um, the interest rates are at a certain low point or at a steady low point. Like now it's not too bad. Rates are starting to kind of decrease a little bit, but if you're a cash buyer, that really doesn't hurt you at all anyway. But yeah, so you want to look at what your, month, what your monthly expenses are gonna be. So that's gonna be your mortgage, your light bill, whether you're gonna have cable and internet, um, whether you're gonna have a cleaning lady, and also like my buyer, again, he's out of town, so he's using a property management company. So you want to make sure you're doing your research on the property management companies. See exactly, because every property management company does not charge the same. See exactly what their fees are and what, what they take care of so that way you know the proper income that you're gonna receive. So another resource that you wanna do, which is gonna be very easy, if you wanna see exactly what they're making in the area, you can simply go on Airbnb, look at the radius of the location that you're interested in purchasing in, look up the actual home that you're purchasing, as far as, let's say, you get in a three bedroom, find another three bedroom, do a comparison, see exactly what they're charging and see what the difference is between the homes or what they have so you can kind of level off. This particular home right here per night is going to be between 178 to 200. So that means that on a monthly, on average, he can average around about maybe 60, a little over 6,400 um, per month. If I'm going to do my calculations correct, you know, correct me later. <laughs> but it's going to be around that range. So he needs to make sure that his expenses are less than that and that he's making enough revenue for it to actually make sense. So there are, that's where you kind of actually play with the actual numbers. So for more information about investing into an Airbnb property, make sure you contact me because I'm pretty sure there's a lot more that I need to give, but I don't want to make this video too long. My information will be below. Also, you can give me a call at 602-930-9910 and I'll be happy to help you all out and making sure you not only get the home of your dreams, but also the investment that you're looking for, for generational wealth. Thank you again for joining me guys. Again, my name is Mike Self and I'll see you later. Yeah. I think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a saw, I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big.